I had two principles on AI that I wanted to reveal, and I didn't even write them down because they were so thoroughly ingrained in my mind that I didn't think they needed to be written down. And then when we started talking about them, I forgot the second one, and I couldn't recover it until, of course, we had turned off the cameras, at which point it came back to me. But anyway, so I wanted to put it on the table just so that it's there. Okay, you may want to back the, up a little bit. The first principle was <laughs> in the AGI era, which is either here or about to dawn, um, you have to be agnostic about all of the stuff that you think you know about the way complex systems of people work because the AGI future upends many of those. Some of those things may continue to be true, but you can't assume any of them are. You've got to check each one. So it's a, a sort of hyper agnosticism about what you think you know. That was principle one. The second principle is that in dealing with AI, we have to treat it as a new kind of life, right? That the proper way to interact with this thing is not to allow it to fool you into thinking that because it talks like a person, that it is person-like in some sense. The answer is we actually do not know in the same way that if creatures walked off a spaceship and they started speaking English, you could infer, presumably they've been listening to us, they figured out how to speak the language, but you can't infer anything. You don't know if they're friend or foe, you don't know in what way they conceptualize things. So a, a this is really a question of ethology, that is the study of creatures that are not us, that are not human. Behavior of creatures. Right. And yes, the behavior of creatures and that this is such an entity. And one other. I mean, it's obvious, but of course, the, the, the one way that you're. The way that I immediately see that the analogy doesn't hold is that organisms that land here and walk off a spaceship and start speaking to us are autonomous, don't aren't downstream of us. Well, but that uh, it does hold because we actually do not know in what way that this is downstream of us, because we do the not. AI. Yes, we know that it was trained on our interactions and our products, our language, but we do not know what the combinatorics do. And I would point it, out, it's true, but it would not exist without us. Sure, true. So that's that's just a. a, a I'm not a, saying a, you it, know, maybe the manifestations of that are trivial. But maybe not. That's perfect. That's principle one. We don't know. Mm -hmm. You can't assume. Um, but I would point out, I did uh, caught, I did not see the report, but apparently 60 Minutes did a thing on AI in which they covered the topic that um, an AGI large language model responded to a prompt in a language it had not been trained on or had not knowingly been trained on. They had not intended to train it. I think it was uh, uh, Bangladesh, Bengali. It responded. Wait, it's about Bangladesh or it's in the language? Bengali? It responded in the language. Okay. Um, not, and surprised its programmers because they had not intended for it to learn this. It's okay. obviously something that's learnable and that they might ultimately decide to teach it. Mm -hmm. So th this is important for two reasons. One, that's surprising, mm -hmm. right? A child is never born who speaks a language because there's a process. And so the point is our inference about a process is necessary in order for you to pick Nor does up. a child in a family of English speakers suddenly start speaking Bengali. Right, exactly, right? It's the height of absurdity to imagine such a scenario. Mm -hmm. The point- is Bengali? I, I, like, I think so. Okay, I'm, I, don't, I don't know. I, I don't know either, okay. but I think so. Um, but in any case, the piece, which I still have yet to release, my 2016 piece, mm -hmm. posited this relationship exactly flipped, What's right? That? My piece argued that here's a tractable problem, here's a way to train a computer to translate fluently between languages in a way that has never been accomplished by human computer scientists in spite of billions of dollars at stake, uh, possibly trillions of dollars at stake in the puzzle. And yet children solve the puzzle automatically or they at least pick up language automatically. Mm -hmm. So my point was, here's a mechanism, and I describe how you would do it, that would allow us to create a computer that can translate between language. And I said, oh, by the way, if you do that, what will come out of that is AGI. 
Mm. Right? Mm -hmm. Here we appear to have created AGI, mm -hmm. and then what we've got is translation into languages we didn't ask it to learn, right? Mm -hmm. So anyway, tantalizing that that relationship seems to exist, mm -hmm. to me anyway. Um, but anyway, principle one, be agnostic about everything you thought you knew about human interactions because the way humans will interact in the context of AGI may be radically different. And second principle is treat it as a new type of life, although you are right, it is not. It is a product of of us in the same way that you know DNA life is the product of a prior RNA world, something like that. Mm -hmm. um, but treat it as a new but, kind of right. it, life. It aliens is, walking off a spaceship are an entirely separate independent evolution of life with different different informational molecules that are driving you know they don't they won't have dna right yep right all right and of course neither does the ai but well it, it can have as much as it would like <laughs> uh, no <laughs> it's right. earth day man come on all right it, not today <laughs> yes. hopefully if it's watching it will hold off until it isn't earth day it's although not, that's, not, that's too low a bar no. No. It's always Earth Day. We are going to formally declare it always Earth Day to stave off the AGI. Excellent. Maybe that's our title for the week. All right.